What? Why are you speaking Japanese? Why is there subtitles floating in front of you? I'm not blind, I can still see them fucking attack. You dumb goof. What comrades? We are stuck in the metaphysical narrative plane here. The only thing besides is that confused child. Because they fucking are. Stop having flashbacks. No. Look, if you can't stop doing this, I'm just gonna leave you. Hey kid, you want some ice creams? Was this all in my mind? What's an Ava? Is that thing Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Trash Talk on Lancer. In today's episode, Tokugawa. Tokugawa Ieyasu was the first shogun of the Tokugawa shogunate that has ruled over the previously divided Japan, and was also considered as the three unifiers of Japan during the late Sengoku era with Oda Nobunaga and Toyotami Hideyoshi. Two of them also got turned into anime girls and one of them turned into an anime cross-dresser. What the fuck Japan? Anyway, the most notable battle Tokugawa Ieyasu has ever participated in was the Battle of Sekigahara, a decisive battle that has changed the fate of Japan and could honestly go either way. In honor of the man in the battle he commanded in, Tokugawa the mech was intentionally designed to let its pilots ride the edge of success and failure, at the same time. Looking at its stats, Tokugawa has an average health and evasion with a single armor. Its speed is decent, E-defense is low but it has an excellent heat cap. While it has a decent center range, it's not gonna be good at tech attack. Also, it has a save target of 11, which not many meshs have. Onto its traits, it has two of them. The first is overclock, which is going to make you go what the fuck. When you have less than two reactor stress, all your attack will deal energy damage with 1d6 more bonus energy damage. Now that's a lot of damage! Is what you would think but there's more. Its second trait, plasma sheath. When you are in danger zone or having exposed condition, all your weapon attacks that deal partially energy damage can turn all their bonus damage into burn. Yes, you read that correctly, all your bonus energy damage turn into burn. And your first trait turns all your weapon attacks to deal energy damage with additional bonus damage. Let's just say that when your enemies have knocked two reactor stresses out of the Tokugawa, they would first laugh and gloat at you. And then they will start wondering where is that boss music coming from. Onto its weapon mount, you have three of them. A flex and two mains. You also get six space system points which is pretty decent. As for your core power. And this! <laughs> What's he doing? Is to go even further beyond! Your superheated reactor feed initiates Radiance Protocol. All your weapons that deal partially energy damage get plus 10 range if they are ranged weapons and plus 2 threat if they are melee weapons. And if you have suffered from the exposed condition, these get increased to 15 range and 3 threat. To say the least, put those distance to use because you are not going to fucking survive any hit as a molten glass cannon. Onto the rest of the license, you get external battery and annihilator in the first section. External battery is basically the safer version of your core power. It gives you bonus range and threat for your ranged and melee weapons but only at plus 5 range and plus 1 threat. Pretty good for a system. However, like I said before, it's safer than your core power but not entirely safe. If you ever take structure damage, the system explodes, dealing 1d6 AP damage to your mech and is destroyed, rendering it useless for the rest of the battle. So, you better put those distance into use. Annihilator is a very strange CQB weapon. Short range, good threat, the damage might look low but it's deceptive because the Annihilator cannot right ignore armor. Also, you might notice this bit here. What it means is that if you miss, you just, miss. But if you hit, your target and people around the target will take damage. In the second section, aside from the frame itself, you get Experimental Heat Sink and Torch. Experimental Heat Sink is not only useful, but entirely necessary for the Tokugawa to make sure it doesn't spontaneously combust. Basically. When your mech starts its turn in danger zone, you gain resistance to all heat including your own until the end of your turn. You will keep this resistance, even if you overheat or cool down from danger zone in the same turn. Torch <coughs> Is basically a bloody lightsaber. It burns people, 
gives two heat just for swinging and charging the damn thing. Also, you might have noticed the overkill tag there. What does overkill do? It's simple. Every time you rolled a 1 on a damaged dice, you can re-roll it but take one additional heat in the process. Basically, it makes sure you will never do minimal damage. But if your luck is terrible, you might end up kept rolling 1 and even overheating yourself. In the final section, you get Plasma Gauntlet and Amaterasu class and HP. Plasma Gauntlet Is fucking insane. Upon activating it, choose a nearby character and that character immediately received 3d6 AP energy damage and knocked on to their ass if they failed the agility save. Sound incredibly fantastic until you realize it makes you take half of that damage as heat and stun in your mech until the start of your next turn. Not only that, but it's also a limited system with only one available usage without additional engineering point. Oh, and you could only use this when you are in danger zone because it wasn't hot enough to cook your real life yet. This system is an incredibly dangerous weapon you have to use carefully. Possibly even embodying the spirit of Tokugawa way too bloody well. Use it if you have a sure chance of victory, and an acknowledgement of how hard you will fall. Finally, the Amaterasu class and HP. Upon activation, you take 1d3 plus 3 heat, and your next weapon attack that must partially deal energy damage will gain bonus damage that's equal to your current heat after the activation of the protocol. This is incredibly useful, and easily prone to failure. Will you risk pushing damage beyond the limit of your heat cap just to do more damage, or will you keep it safe and calculative just below your limit? Oh, and you have three shots with this system so use it wisely. Or don't. That's your choice. As a conclusion, Tokugawa is a mech for those that give zero shits about danger and failure, or for those that are calculative in risk and success. Either way, your presence on the battlefield can easily decide the fate of those on it. As you will either be rampaging through them like a demon from hell, or aiding them like a flaming sword of justice. <laughs>